Today we get to showcase to you the brand new super troops, the Infernal Dragon and the Super Witch. I will be showcasing gameplay, giving you some tips for when the update arrives. So without further ado, let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I'm your host Juno Sloth. Today we have sneak peek number three, being the Inferno Dragon and the Super Witch. Two new super troops. Now on the first day of sneak peeks, we brought you all of the new troop levels, hero levels, so much new stuff. And then on the second day, we brought you all of the quality of life changes. I'm sure you guys are going to be loving the friendly challenge feature and not having to cook up an actual army. But this is not the last day of sneak peeks. We still have more, so if you want to see them as soon as I can bring them to you, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Now, if you do want to support me in game, the best way to do so is by going into your settings and entering code JUDO before making any purchases. But let's go ahead and show you gameplay of the brand new Super Troops. Okay, so let's first give you an explanation of the two new super troops, show you their proposed stats, and then I will show you gameplay and a few tips for how I think these super troops will be used. However, it is important to note that the Infernal Dragon and the Super Witch are in addition to the four other super troops. So all I mean by that is you can only boost one of them at a time. You're not going to be able to have both the Infernal Dragon and the Super Witch which it is a one week cooldown between super troops. Clash of Clans have said that if the list were to get incredibly large, they would think about letting us boost more than one super troop, and I think that is only fair. So for the Infernal Dragon, starting off, this is basically a baby dragon with a single target Inferno Tower on its back. Yes, you heard that right. Now, when we get into the gameplay, you will see, particularly on defense in the clan castle, this is incredible. Goodbye, Queen Chargers, Inferno Baby Dragon OP. However, for the proposed stats, it will start off at 80 DPS, going up to, yes, you see that, 1006 100 damage per second. Now all of the stats on the developer build are just a preview. They are always subject to change. So do recognize that guys. But basically it is a souped up version of the baby dragon allowing you to have the single target inferno beam. Why don't I quickly show you some gameplay in the practice mode before discussing the Super Witch and then giving tips for both of them. So it is 15 housing space and where this really shines is if you can get the Inferno Beam to power up. That's pretty obvious, right? But what you might not have thought of is using freeze spells in order to help with that. And it might be that for 15 troop capacity, you can take down some pretty huge buildings in terms of HP where the Inferno Dragon doesn't really do so well is if it's taking a lot of damage. Now, that's for obvious reasons. It doesn't get time to charge up that single ability, so you don't really get massive value from it. But if you can keep it on the higher HP buildings, then you can get some pretty good value with the Inferno Dragon. And I have to say that I think the Frozen Inferno Dragon could be a viable strategy. I don't think the Super Witches are going to be as good as the Inferno Baby Dragon. If you have any thoughts though as we go through this, like I said, I will give you some other tips towards the end. You can be sure to let me know in the comments. What you have to be careful of is the Inferno Baby Dragon retargeting, especially if it is just attacking really small HP buildings. So that's where, as long as it's got a defense on it, it's going to go down relatively quick. It's not getting a lot of value in terms of charging that beam up, but check this one out. What about the town hall? Could we take out a town hall? And yes, my friends, you most certainly could. Again, you've got to be ready with the freeze spell because it doesn't always get the charge, but 
if you can keep it out of the way of defenses, it will ramp up that ability and take down them high health buildings relatively easily. Now I think there are two very clear, fantastic uses for the Inferno Dragons. The first one being having them in your defensive clan castle. This might cause the Queen's ability to be burnt, but think about as well if the Queen was also getting damaged by the defenses. Irrespective of the amount of defenses though, you are going to have to commit something to the Inferno Baby Dragons on defense, even if that is just a freeze spell to reset the charging ability and protect your Queen's ability. But if there are a lot of other defenses shooting at your Queen, it might be that you need to use a Rage spell as well, but you have to consider the Inferno Dragons on defense. The other main use that I see for the Inferno Dragon is to ensure you take out the Town Hall. Now this could be particularly good on ring style bases where you can just focus on taking out the outside and just send a couple of Inferno Dragons into the Town Hall. Now you do have to be careful of Black Bombs so you might want to send two of them in and also you might have to commit a Freeze spell depending on if there's any defenses around. However the Inferno Dragon can indeed get through that Town Hall no problem because it will be able to do an incredible amount of DPS once it has charged up its attack. Let's quickly show you the Super Witch in terms of stats and the practice mode, and then I will go ahead and give you some tips on how I think you might be able to use both of these Super Troops. Now, they are both 60,000 Dark Elixir in order to boost up, but the Super Witch, she is a little bit different to the regular Witch and the Night Witch. Normally, you spawn a group of skeletons or bats. However, with the Super Witch, you spawn a single big boy a giant skeleton. Now the giant skeleton has around about the same hit points as a super giant, but what the difference is, is that the super witch, she does around about twice the amount of damage as the regular non-super witch, if you will, but 40 housing space. That is the negative side of this. Let's go ahead and just show you the gameplay in the practice mode. I'll show you exactly what I mean because it's it's quite interesting actually because the regular witch is strong against single target infernos because you spawn a group of skeletons. However, I believe that the super witch is going to be the opposite because after a few seconds she spawns the single giant skeleton I think single target infernos are going to be their downfall. If you were to have a single take the giant skeleton out, then potentially lock onto your 40 housing space witch, it's going to be very difficult. So I think the super witch offers you witch fans a, an option for the multi-target inferno again once the super witch has been vulnerable without that giant skeleton for a little while she'll go ahead and spawn another one but it might be too little too late at that point if she has been locked on by a defense and for 40 housing space you're not going to be able to take loads of them i think multi-target infernos, splash damages, it might actually be pretty good for that meta, but we do see a lot of single targets right now, so I'm not sure how useful the Super Witch will be against them bases. What I thought I would do with the Super Witch is a mass Super Witch attack. Seven of them at 40 housing space, that is your entire army. Now I do have a couple of tips for the Super Witch, which I will give to you throughout this attack, but let's start off with the Yeti Battle Blimp. So we'll send that in towards the multi. Again, that's probably one of the areas that the Super Witches will be good against, but we'll just try and clear this area. We've also lured the Inferno Dragons, which we can then pull to the corner of the base with my King and Queen. Remember when you are going to be freezing the Inferno Dragons to help your heroes, see if you can tag some of the defenses there as well just to help you through and that will definitely be something you want to take a look at. However, let's move across to the Super Witches. Where I do think we could potentially use them is areas of the base that you can funnel if there is a defense or two. 
So notice to the bottom of the base, we have the cannon, we have the archer tower. You need a couple of defenses there in order to make the super witch worth its while in terms of the 40 housing space, because the giant skeleton, it can tank all day long for a single point defense and your witch can just slowly move through, do what she needs to do in order to take out them buildings. Other than that, I don't actually think there's a huge use for the Super Witch because she's just very expensive. But you can share with me your thoughts down in the comments. Do try and make sure that the giant skeletons are distracting the defenses if you have a point defense lock onto your witch if she can get direct access to it she will probably take that down relatively quickly actually and you won't have to worry about it but it might be that 40 housing space is a lot to then lose let's send in the royal champion one final note if you do want to weirdly enough plan a mass super witch attack is that you will have to be careful of time fails because you don't have a lot of cleanup in the base so just raging the super witches through the final portion as you can see i mean they're relatively good in terms of a mass attack you should be comfortable in terms of that two star i don't think it's going to be an overwhelming witch spam meta at town hall 13 like we have seen at previous levels but they've done okay look 75% with an attack just setting the funnel, mass super witches. However, I do think they're a little bit trickier to use because of their massive housing space than the Inferno Dragons. My main thoughts are, like I said, to try and create the funnel in an area where there's limited point defense and you can literally just send in one of them to clear out that whole area. You do have to question whether it's better to send a baby dragon and a couple of loons in that scenario, but let me know your thoughts on the Super Witch down in the comments. If there's a lot of splash damage in the area, it might be that your Super Witch is good, but check that out. I mean, we have four of them. That is 160 housing space left on the map at the end of the raid. So they're relatively strong, it's just trying to integrate them into an attack. It might be you can get one or two in there along with the Yetis. If you do have multi-Infernos, and you might be able to, to integrate it relatively well. But that is going to wrap it up for the two Super Troop gameplay video. I hope you have enjoyed it. If you do want to see yesterday's video with the quality of life changes, I've got it on the screen alongside the subscribe button because we will be back with more sneak peeks tomorrow.